Welcome back to Amino Acid Biosynthesis on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. In this video, we're going to discuss the biosynthesis of a molecule called charismate. And it turns out that the charismate is going to be the precursor to all three aromatic amino acids, which are going to include phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. And what we tend to do with the three aromatic amino acids, at least for their biosynthesis, is we look at the biosynthesis of charismate first, and then we'll look at the synthesis of phenylalanine and tyrosine in one video, another video, and then tryptophan synthesis in another video. So it'll be three separate videos. So let's first delve into the synthesis of the molecule charismate. So first of all, we have two major precursors for charismate. One is phosphoenolpyruvate, and the other is erythrose-4-phosphate. And at least, most likely from a biochemistry one course, you've probably seen these molecules before. Phosphoenolpyruvate is the uh, ninth substrate in glycolysis. This is actually what gets converted into pyruvate by the action of pyruvate kinase. It's also formed from enolase, the glycolytic enzyme. So this is going to have to be siphoned out of glycolysis. Erythrose-4-phosphate is actually an intermediate in the pentose phosphate pathway, also called the hexamonophosphate shunt. So um, that's going to have to come out of that, both of which uh, these processes occur in the cytoplasm. Okay. Now, these two molecules are going to be condensed by an enzyme with a tongue twister name. That is the enzyme. Enzymes are up here. It is 2-keto-3-deoxy-arabinohepiolysinate-7-phosphate synthase. In any case, what this enzyme is going to do is it's going to condense these two molecules with the loss of phosphate into this molecule, which is aptly named 2-keto-3-deoxy-arabinohepiolysinate-7-phosphate. So obviously this is a linear chain right here, okay? We're going to need to cyclize it into this molecule called dehydroquinate. This is catalyzed by the second enzyme in the pathway, dehydroquinate synthase. Now notice you're going to have a loss of phosphate in this reaction, and this enzyme is actually going to require NAD. This is one of the few enzymes that we'd ever encounter in which the NAD is not actually a substrate, where NAD gets converted to NADH or vice versa. In fact, the NAD is actually a covalently bound entity. It's actually a prosthetic group in this case. Okay? So NAD is actually used in the reaction, but it's attached to the enzyme. In any case, dehydroquinate synthase converts this molecule into 3-dehydroquinate. Uh, the next enzyme, 3-dehydroquinate dehydratase, is going to remove a molecule of water. Um, the water is going to come from this hydroxyl group on this top carbon, and essentially what's going to happen is between this carbon atop the ring and this one right here on this corner going left, you're actually going to form a double bond. So this, this reaction is going to essentially be an elimination type reaction. And that gives you this molecule, which is called 3 dehydroshikimate All right. The next enzyme, we're going up here, is the fourth enzyme that is called shikimate dehydrogenase. So this enzyme is going to convert 3-dehydroshikimate into shikimate. And essentially what this enzyme does is it takes this carbonyl down here on the bottom corner, this carbon double bond oxygen, and it's going to reduce it into a hydroxyl group. And notice that it's going to require electrons from NADPH, so those are going to be used in this reduction step. And that's going to generate this molecule called shikimate. Now, the fifth enzyme in the pathway, shikimate kinase, I think this is pretty understandable. It's going to use the phosphate from ATP and phosphorylate this oxygen right here. Notice now it has a phosphate on it, and we now term this shikimate 3-phosphate. All right. The sixth enzyme in this pathway is going to require a second molecule of phosphoenolpyruvate, or PEP. So the same PEP from here, it's going to have to come from, ultimately, the cytoplasm. And what it's going to do is it's going to attach the three carbons from PEP onto this oxygen right here on the opposite side of the shikimate molecule. And so the enzyme that does this, enzyme 6, is called 5 enolpyruvyl shikimate 3-phosphate synthase. And so what you see is these three carbons, which were a part of PEP, now get attached to this oxygen, and this molecule is called 5 enolpyruvyl shikimate 3-phosphate. All right, now time for the, ult the ultimate enzyme, or the last enzyme in this pathway, is aptly named charismate synthase. What it's going to do is it's going to catalyze, first of all, 
Uh, this double bond essentially is going to move over here. Notice that this double bond translocates right here. And then with the loss of phosphate, so this is going to be an elimination type reaction, we get a second double bond added right here. And this is the molecule of charismate. Now what you'll notice in this pathway, uh, and I think it's really important considering where we're going with charismate, uh, we're going toward three aromatic amino acids. And remember, if we're generating an aromatic ring, at least in terms of the six-membered ring, we have to have three conjugated double bonds. We have two right here. We'll have to get a third double bond right here, and that would fully generate aromaticity. So notice what we have to do. We have to start with a linear chain, so a non-cyclic or acyclic compound. We then cyclize it. We then add in one double bond, okay, and we have to do some work to actually uh, get it to where we can add the second double bond. So you can imagine that we're going to take charismate probably in perhaps the next video, and to make phenylalanine and tyrosine and then ultimately tryptophan, we're actually going to have to somehow add in a third double bond right here. And actually what we'll find is it's actually going to uh, require the net removal of this group right here. In fact, it's actually going to translocate up here to the top, but that's going to allow you to form the third double bond, and we're actually going to cover that in in the next video when we cover phenylalanine and tyrosine biosynthesis. Now, there's a couple other things I want to mention about uh, this pathway. First of all, the three aromatic amino acids that come from this, at least in terms of complete de novo biosynthesis, none of these three amino acids, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan, can be synthesized completely from scratch in humans. Okay. Um, now, if you look up a list of essential amino acids, meaning amino acids that cannot be synthesized in humans, you will definitely find phenylalanine and tryptophan. Tyrosine is sometimes and many times not included on the list of essential amino acids because, as we discovered in amino acid catabolism, there's a reaction called phenylalanine hydroxylase that can convert phenylalanine to tyrosine. And for some, really what I perceive as a stupid reason, tyrosine is therefore not considered essential. It's not essential because you can form it from phenylalanine. But if you had intake of no phenylalanine, so you didn't intake any essential amino acids, you could not synthesize tyrosine because you cannot synthesize tyrosine from scratch. You cannot synthesize any of these from scratch because to make these, you have to generate charismate. And this pathway of generating charismate does not occur in higher order eukaryotes such as mammals. Okay? Um, this can occur in plants and bacteria, but certainly not mammals and birds and lizards and things like that. Okay. So this pathway is strictly uh, confined to bacteria and plants. And so therefore, with no charisma, you can't make these three amino acids. Okay. Now, just as a, uh, something to uh, think about, the phenylalanine and tyrosine are going to be processed further in humans. This can be done in humans to make neurotransmitters and hormones called catecholamines. Additionally, the tryptophan that we could generate, uh, or that we would intake rather, uh, can actually be used in humans to generate uh, two molecules. One is serotonin, a neurotransmitter, and the other is a hormone released by the pineal gland called melatonin. We'll actually come back to the topic of melatonin in a separate video. It's fairly interesting. But hopefully, this pathway of generating charismate makes sense. In the next video, we're going to talk about the conversion of charismate into the two uh, aromatic amino acids with one ring, that is phenylalanine and tyrosine. Join us there, but hopefully this video made sense. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.